Why are more and more families choosing to make Danville, Virginia their next move? Well, you could try to Google that and figure out why families are going out planting roots here in the city of Danville, but you won't find it there. What I want to do is take you out into the community and give you a first-hand experience as to why more families are making Danville home. My name is David Totten. I'm your host and local lifestyle expert, giving you everything you need to know about living, working, eating, playing in and around the Danville, Virginia area. And I'm also a licensed realtor in Virginia and North Carolina. So I'm also able and capable to help you buy, sell, invest in and around the Danville region. I will not bore you by looking at my face. So let's get the obvious out of the way. Economic activity is at an all time high here in the city of Danville, Virginia. So as promised, I told you we'd be out in the community. You won't be staring at my face, sitting in an office, talking about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around Danville, Virginia. So I'm actually right across the street from the casino location right now. And man, when I tell you, I'm gonna take you out, and we'll walk around on the outskirts of the construction site. But the hotel, this 12 story hotel is up. The parking deck, I mean, it's amazing what Whiting Turner, who is the construction company building this facility, what they've been able to do. Cranes everywhere, the parking deck is up amazingly, which will offer a little over 1,300 parking spots. Because, I mean, right now in the temporary facility, you know what, let's just get out. I'll talk so you can see what I see. Okay, so I apologize for talking to you, looking at me as if you could see what I saw. But here you can see the casino parking deck is being built and they've already got the structure up. And again, that's gonna be over 1,331 uh, parking spaces. Uh, then you have the parking lot here. Employees park on this side. And the Danville Police Department, the new one is actually right down here and they've constructed a new street where um, so you have west main street right up here at the stoplight <clears throat> but right here to the right is community way that they have uh they've built to go right into the police department because i know and uh, i'm pretty sure you've heard through major outlets that the local citizens here thought that crime was gonna be a huge thing when this casino came to town. And honestly, it hasn't been. There have been some reports of larceny, but those are, and this is, this is a funny statistic. And this is all factual because I don't like to give you information that I have not checked first. The number of cases of larceny reported at the casino are significantly lower than the number of cases of larceny reported at the local Walmart. So picture that um, for all of the people who were against uh, this facility and Caesars coming to town, just got to say right now you're wrong. Uh, so we have a, uh, you can see kind of the, the front entrance, let me zoom in a little bit. The front entrance right here uh, if you look on some of the renderings is where like that awning, uh, I guess valet might be there where they can take people coming in. It's three stacks are still there. Again, the 12 story hotel is there. Uh, this is the temporary site that is getting 100,000 visitors per month, bringing in close to $20 million per month in revenue. Um, in the permanent facility, we will have over 90,000 square feet of gaming space, over 1,400 slot machines, over 80 some table games. And there was supposed to be a permanent auditorium uh, or event center for concerts, uh, MMA fights, uh, world poker tournaments, but plans have changed due to COVID and what they're going to do now is just have a 40,000 square foot conference and meeting or event space 
where all those all those things will still happen. But you know they're planning on conferences being during the week and then concerts on the weekend. Uh, they're having some major comedy and comedians coming in. I cannot disclose who. One because I've only heard murmurings about what's going on and who's coming to town. And again, I'm not gonna give you anything that has not been fact checked yet. But this is the street that leads down to the police department. Uh, if you can see the construction equipment there, you can take a left there and that'll take you up to Main Street too, uh, where Hardy's is. And also, you know, you can still come back down this way. But major investment, major part of the economic development and growth here in the city. There is, uh, there are two other spots that I wanna stop at on our, you know, our trek around town. We're gonna go take a look at the progress made on the Riverfront Park. And uh, we're also gonna go take a look at uh, a new housing community that I had mentioned in a previous video, uh, the Monument Berryman Project that uh, is starting to starting to grow some legs um, eight of the 24 new units that are being constructed are going vertical um, i'll give you a little more detail when we get over there but i did at least want you to see uh what the casino and what is taking place over here they have they have made tremendous strides in getting this place up and running uh, so we're gonna hop back in the car and drive over to downtown so we can see the riverfront park see everything cool that they have going on there that's going to be uh, a major attraction for the river district and i will uh hop back on when we get back downtown all right so we are downtown uh here at the riverfront park uh, that you can see behind me that is under construction, making really good progress. This was a, started off as a $14 million project, but costs have gone up, of course, because of COVID and sourcing materials and all of that. But the cool thing about this, this riverfront park is it's gonna be over four acres of playground water slides, which you should see on the screen now um water activities and attractions plus you're gonna have outdoor entertainment activities plus there will be a pier going out into the river uh, some folks out there fishing right now but this is going to be a cool little place the city is banking on this being uh the river district's premier attraction and there is a 40 foot otter right here that I think is gonna become the kid's best friend. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this. And this project is connected to Dan River Falls, which is the white mill conversion that will be apartments for residents in the area. Those will range between $1,200 to $1,500 a month with utilities and some other amenities included. But I mean, like any city, that is based around water. You have to have attractions to draw people downtown. And um, the city of Danville is doing a great job. Uh, you gotta give it to uh, city manager, city general manager, and city council uh, for thinking about the residents of this area and trying to get people to come to the area to stay, whether it's you know kids when they leave high school, or graduate from college and come back. You know, I, I did not grow up in the city of Danville. I grew up in a town called Pelham, right across the border. But this is where my family came to shop, groceries, clothes. This is where I hung out, cruised Riverside Drive every weekend. And I told myself that once I left, I'd never come back. And here I am. So, um, we got one more place to look at as far as economy is concerned, and that is the new development over off of Monument Berryman. But I did want to let you take a look and give you a shot of the progress that they're making on, hey, uh, the progress they're making here at the Riverfront Park. Um, city of Danville, baby, you gotta love it. So we're gonna head over to Monument Berryman now, hop back in the car, 
and give you a rundown of what the new homes are gonna look like and what they're gonna cost uh, here when they're done with those uh, over the next several and few months. Welcome back, my friends. So we are now at the uh, Old Belt Townhomes right here on the corner of Cabell and Monument Street. And these are the townhomes we were talking about. And they have eight going up right now. Believe it or not, two of these already have contracts on them and two more are in negotiations. So these townhomes, uh, with this whole development, there will be a total of 24 townhomes, 60 apartments. They're gonna scale Cabell, Monument, Shelton, Franklin, and Beauregard Street. You can see, I mean, since I was out here about two, three weeks ago, uh, they just had the framing up, but now we got insulation, we have windows, we have some of the bricks around going up. <clears throat> they are making tremendous strides uh, with these townhouses. They are gonna start right around $270,000. They'll all have private patios on the back. There will be three bedroom, three bathrooms, a living room, a kitchen, uh, right around 1,500 square feet. So, I mean, this, this area is poised for uh, tremendous growth, especially with the neighbors. And uh, another unique feature, because these sit just outside of the River District, um, you have behind me uh, several area attractions. In this building here, right on the end, you have Boston's uh, Bourbon Bistro and Bar. You have the River District Golf and Social um, here, which is an indoor scaled down, uh, kind of like Top Golf, but you play indoors on screens. They just opened uh, a little bowling, a uh, little bowling alley right beside it. So you go in, uh, they do have great food. So the same food you get at River District Golf and Social, you get at the new bowling spot. And I think it's one or two lanes and they have a little party space for birthday parties for kids, meetings, what have you. But that's a unique feature uh, with these townhouses is you're right across the street from some main attractions, good food, nightlife. Downtown is literally a street or two over, so you're in a great area. Again, these are going for 270,000. Three bedroom, three bath, 1,500 square feet. Townhouses, and of course they are exclusively marketed by Wilkins & Co. Uh, here in Danville by Miss, <coughs> by Miss Carpenter Walden. Now, I know $270,000 price tag on a three bed, three bath townhome may sound a little expensive, to several people. But um, I wanna take you back to the office for a minute because we gotta have a conversation about something that is the second reason why I believe a lot of people are making Danville their new home. So when I get back in the office, we're gonna talk about the second major reason, which is the dollar signs. And, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in these, let me know. See you back in the office in a second. Let's talk cost of living comparisons for a minute to give you a better idea of why so many are making a move to Danville from other major areas. We're talking New York City. We're talking Washington, D.C., California, and even over in North Carolina, down in Raleigh. So imagine paying $3,500 per month in rent. Yes, I said it, rent, my friends. $3,500 in rent? Oh my God, and that's for a studio apartment. And you know what a studio is? It's a small space. Everything is in the same space. Where you sleep, where you eat, where you bathe, all of that is right there. And that's $3,500 a month. New York City, that's the financial district, that's Flatbush, that's Midtown. So when you do a comparison, and these are just averages, of course, but when you look at Danville, Virginia, the average rent, and I know some are gonna disagree, I'm gonna get comments about, oh my God, you can't find that kind of rent in Danville anymore. But on average, and this is not David talking, these are statistics, $800 a month. Now, I will say I probably cheat more toward 900 to 950 per month in rent 
but compared to 3500 oh my gosh. And then if you look at places like DC, you know, that's $2,500 a month. And then you look at California, that's $2,800 a month. So we're looking at, oh my gosh, here, nine to 950 in Danville versus places like California, DC, New York, anywhere between $2,800 to $3,500. I'd move too, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. Or let's talk home values. So in New York, home values are upwards of $500,000. That's the median, 500,000. When you look at Washington, DC, we're looking at about 625. That's thousands, 625,000. Go out to the West Coast. We're looking at anywhere between 845 to 850. And that's median. Now, if you bring things closer to home, even down in Raleigh, North Carolina, my friends, you're still looking at 450,000 for an average home sold price. So you come to Danville, now you're looking at about 200 to 250,000 average home sales price. I think I'd move again too. You know, if you're looking at rent, that's 2,800 to 3,500 average in other places. Then when you look at home sales from 435, 450, all the way up to over $800,000 and you can come to Danville and pay a fraction of that. That's why a lot of people are making the move. So you look at property tax rates. Now, these will probably be more comparable because you have, you know, Danville at right at 80.8%, New York's about 0.9. Then you have Washington, D.C. at 0.85 and California at 0.77. But when you compare that to what home sale for, I mean, it's really a no brainer. The math ain't math. It. And I know that is not proper grammar, but it makes sense. So when we go to a cost per square foot, then things kind of take a turn too. So in the city of Danville, the cost per square foot is $110. In New York, you're looking at about $1,500. In Washington, DC, you're looking at $600. And in California, you're looking at $400. So these figures clearly suggest that Danville, Virginia offers significantly lower housing costs compared to other major locations. And you're still within a day's drive of 60% of the US population and a lot of our country's most popular attractions. So not only is the economy playing a significant factor in people calling Danville home, but the cost of living is also. And I am about to take you to a special place, which I think is going to be the major selling point of why people are moving to this area and making it home from these other areas. So finally friends, this is what makes Danville special. Um, <clears throat> it's events like this. We're at the food truck rodeo downtown on Bridge Street. I'm actually here with one of my brothers, my one of my church members, Mr. Ladarius Fitzgerald. Don't take my word for it. I'm gonna let him tell you. Tell the people why you love Danville so much. Oh man, um, it's just a wholesome town, very friendly, very family oriented, and it's just a great city to be in. I mean, it's, we're not, we're a small town, great to be big. So we got a lot of stuff going on. People need to come down here and just come see the love that we're showing. Like this right here, this is, this is one, of, one of our favorite events. I come every year, me and my wife, and we just love it. Just, just love to be out here enjoying the family time. So, be on the lookout. Come join us. Well, there you have it, family. Big city of Danville. Big things come in small packages, and uh, that is what this city is about. Um, if you are planning on moving to the area, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, schedule a Zoom meeting with me. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to the area. Uh, I'm about to go enjoy some of this good food that they have downtown today. So, uh, yeah, don't take our word for it. Come check out Danville for yourself. Uh, we are right on the North Carolina border. We, we, we love it. Uh, we think you'll love it here, too. Until I see you in the next video, take care. God bless. See you next time. Peace.